All right, everybody. So here is a tier list that we were just talking about right now. Now remember, Konami is only the games that we're gonna be doing. So we're not gonna be doing their subsidiary um, company, which is Ultra Games, which is a dummy company that they created in 1988. Because Nintendo had very strict rules when it came to actual gaming. If you didn't know that, so what happened was that Nintendo will only allow games um, from companies of five per year. So some of these companies wanted to make a bunch of games out there and they couldn't because they had to pick and choose between let's say out of 12 games only five of them could be reduced per year so this is a way for them to go around it through their back and stuff like that so yeah i guess that's a pretty smart move konami but <laughs> this is the tier list right now we're gonna go through all the games that we're gonna go in order from what we see here first game we have is bill elliott's nascar challenge it's a video game developed by distinguished software and published by konami I was released on MS-DOS, Amiga, Macintosh, and Nintendo in 1991. The game is the first video game to ever secure the NASCAR license. It features several real NASCAR tracks in the game, such as Watkins Glen and Talladega. Talladega Nights, Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. Uh, this game also was the first to feature a real NASCAR driver in a PC game, Bill Elliott. I wasn't a huge fan of Bill Elliott. I was more of a fan of... um. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace, those were got my type of guys and stuff like that. So the game was good. What I say is the best racing game out there. I think there was other ones better than that one. I think I would go more with Days of Thunder um, over this one. If I had to rank Bill Elliott's NASCAR racing, I would have to give it a B ranking. So we'll put it as a B right now and go from there and see what happens. Rush and Attack, also known as Green Barret and Japan and Europe is a run and gun and hack and slash video game developed by konami and the arcades in 1985 i was later converted to a nintendo video game system and home computers it's russian attack during um due to the cold war setting players assume roles of the united states special operations green berets named steve and ben on the japanese famicom ad poster who are infiltrating an enemy military base to save prisoners of war from execution by a firing squad there are four stages each ending with a special group of ambushers martial areas harbor air base and siberian camp now you do get extra lives in the game you get them at 30,000 points 70,000 points now we did get a version of it on the game boy advance we also got on the nintendo um ds xbox 360 got russian attack which was released on the xbox um live arcade and 360 in may of 20 of 2007 and then a konami next dx also had it out there the game got very good reviews out there i mean a lot of them gave them over an 80 percent, which is a very positive score i remember playing it but if i think that it was good i i liked it but it's not man there was like metal gear solid and all these other games out there that i think were a lot better um, I was a huge G.I. Joe fan, so I do love these type of games. But again, this is another one that I'm about to give it into a B tier because honestly, it wasn't just for me. I don't think it was those type of games I really enjoyed that much back in the day. If you all don't remember, where in the world is Carmen San Diego and that hit song? <laughs> Carmen San Diego. Yep, yep, yep. Carmen San Diego was a hit TV show back in the day and a hit video game as well. I remember playing this when I was in my um school, playing it on you know, obviously the the computer and all that. And honestly, when it came into the Nintendo, it was a game that I liked playing as well because you would have to try finding out where Carmen San Diego was. So you start off as a time cadet and throughout the game, you're prompted to time patroller, time investigator, inspector, and you keep on going up. I need to track um, criminals movements, figure out where he or she is going next, obtain a warrant for his or her arrest, and send a capture robot to arrest a thief. It's cool because you had to find clues and it kind of showed you different areas around the world and stuff like that. So it was a fun game for me. Um, you had to capture over 80 criminals to beat the game. So for a game like the NES to have something like this, it was a huge, huge thing for me. And honestly, it got a lot of good rewards out there, but I would honestly got rate this game just because the nostalgic of it and how much I liked it as well. And it's showing you so many different features of it. I have to rank it as an A for me. That's hands down, an A. 
so we'll give it an a score out there batman returns oh man great movie michelle pfeiffer danny devito the game was in 1993 as a beat em up video game um based on of course a batman michael keaton which is the best batman of all time i don't give a crap what anybody says he's number one adam was number two who cares about the rest i'm gonna be honest with you it was a beat em up game similar to double dragon and to teenage mutant ninja turtles but the thing was that i didn't like about it compared to the original batman game the batman one that we all know and love so much in 1989 that one was honestly 100 s tier 100 the best game there was out there this one kind of lost its edge and i think that happened to a lot of games when the nes came out with the second game of a lot of different games out there a lot of the critics out there like 11 um i'm trying to give it a monthly give it like a 24 out of 40 which will put it like in the middle range like a b range for us and i think that honestly that's where i would kind of put it there as well you had the batmobile you had the um basky boat but it's not a, an a tier for me it's not a b tier i would have to put it it's not an a tier and it's not an s tier for sure i have to put it as a b tier and look i'm a huge batman fan if you guys don't know i have everything of batman i actually have this movie in a laser just hall so when people try to ask me you're not a huge batman fan i have a huge batman figure number one all right this is, i love this figure this is one of my favorite figures but i actually have the movie in a laser disc and if you guys remember we did a video on the terminator 2 um that i have the laser disc for this as well i have the laser disc also for batman returns i gotta buy this player if you guys want to help me out you can super chat you can always donate to me and that money will go directly to me buying a laser disc and we'll actually watch a movie on that laser disc on stream one day so i gotta find a movie that they'll allow me to do without you know timing me out so but this game, 100% a B. Let's get to the next one. The Adventures of Bayou Billy. Bayou Billy was like that um, Crocodile Dundee out there. Game was released in 1989. And of course, is a Crocodile Dundee, you know, vigilante from the bayous of Louisiana who fought against a local crime boss known as Godfather Gordon. They couldn't name any other person, but they had the name of Godfather. Did Gordon sound like someone from Louisiana? Yo, I'm Gordon. That's not people that sound in Louisiana. My bad, I'm so sorry. Um, in retaliation for interfering with the soy operations, Gordon kidnaps Billy's girlfriend, Annabelle Lane, in order to lure Billy into one final battle. Billy's quest to save Annabelle's consists of nine stages to take him from the Swamplands to Bourbon Street as he battles Gordon's henchmen and eventually arrives at Gordon's estate to come face to face with the crime boss himself. Now, it's a, mostly a side scrolling type of game, beat him up, where you play as Billy. And of course, you do have some things I think that also have like beat him up, like gun shooting, and some racing in it as well. This game was actually shown in a TV show that we put a tier list, not a tier list, but a community tab where we guys voted on um, for the Nintendo themed anime TV series, Captain Aim the Game Master, where Bayou Billy appears in an episode titled Howl's Bayou, voiced by Gary Chalek. So it's pretty cool that they actually incorporate him into Captain Aim the Game Master. What would I rate this game? Dun, 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 dun. A tier for me. Guys, if you guys don't know about this, we're going to be posting down in the about section the tier list as well. So if you all want to do your own tier list, let me know. Do it. Share it with me in the Discord that you're going to be seeing under the about section as well. We're going to have a section on there for tier list. I'm going to have every single one that I've done. I want you guys to post it up there. We'll talk about it in the next stream, next video, and we'll give you guys some, some shout outs as well. So bye you, Billy. A tier for me. Let me know what you guys think. Blades of Steel. Who here liked hockey back in the day? I think hockey back in the day when we had Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, that was the days to watch. I mean, Wayne Gretzky playing for Mark Messier was another one that I love to watch as well. And I, I used to like the Rangers. I was a huge LA Kings fan. I think I should have lived in LA. But I think it was because my, my cousin lived in LA. So I kind of wanted to like, like the LA teams. Like, you know, the Dodgers, when Hidel Nomo and stuff like that. And when Wayne Gretzky was over there. And I forgot the coach for the Kings. He's now an announcer for the NHL games. But I loved loved hockey back in the day so when this game came out i loved it to death as well they actually came out with two sequels blades of steel 99 and blades of steel 2000 the game was released in 1987 so of course this game is great now you have two different versions of it you can play exhibition you can play tournament matches tournament matches was pretty much like kind of like the nhl playoffs uh the scene society beating in all the opposing teams are awarded the cup the game did have a lot of fighting in it and i think that's the one thing that we loved about all these hockey games back in the day was the fighting of it like Burr! so fighting games when they say when 
two players bump into each other three times in a row without hitting another player. So it's pretty cool. Like, you know, you just nag someone, you know. I wonder, like, how many times someone has nagged us or just tapped us and we just want to punch them. But we can't because, you know what, we kind of will be arrested for that. So, honestly, guys, this game was one of the best hockey games, I think, back in the day. Um, I think when Sega Genesis came out with their Mario Lemieux hockey game, where I actually have the, I used to have the puck that came with it because it was the actual box and the puck came in it. That might have been the best game out there. But Blades of Steel for me, honestly, another A tier for me. I, I loved sports games back in the day. It was, it was one of those games that you have to go and give it a great rating. We now jump into Bucky O'Hare. Yes, we're not talking about Bucky from the Captain America. We're talking about Bucky O'Hare, the platform game for the Nintendo system based on the comic book series of the same name. Now, this game was developed obviously by Konami um, in 1992. Stars a touch of the robot as captain of the righteous ignit indignation, which protects the parallel universe from the Aniverse. His crew members, members Duck Deadeye, Cat Jenny, Android Blinky, and Human Willy have been captured by the Toad Air Marshal. Now, Bucky O'Hare had that whole entire battle toads, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, whole entire vibe to it. And I think it was one of those type of games that I love so much. Now, they all take advantages on different planets so the first four levels take place on a green red blue and yellow planet the crew members are imprisoned and then you start off as bucky and there are kidnapped crew members are playable once rescued and have different abilities and weapons now the game was like a mega man as scrolling shoot em up adventure arcade platform game which is pretty cool and i i kind of loved mega man so much back in the day and i i love the whole entire story with it I think the game was well received and I think that if they were to make another Bucky O'Hare game, I would 100% hands down play it. It was by US Gamer called one of the top 11 best NES games from 92 to 94. I have to agree with US Gamer on that because I am giving this game our first air S tier um, on our tier list. So yes, Bucky O'Hare, you get the S tier. Thank you so much for the great game. And you know what? I think that might be a game that we might be able to play on stream as well. I think we've been doing the worst video games of the NES or retro era. I think now it's time for us to play maybe some of these good games as well. And maybe Bucky O'Hare will be the first one we play. So if you guys like that, let me know as well. All right. We got into our Castlevania series. We have three main Castlevania games. We have Castlevania 1, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, and Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. And I'm going to tell you right now. Castlevania has been a staple out of so many things. I have been watching Captain and the Game Master recently a lot more. And obviously seeing Simon Belmont, we have just heard that Castlevania is actually be joining the Dead by Daylight franchise, which honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, I have not played Dead by Daylight in a long time, but I will be playing it when Castlevania comes out. I have to play a Simon Belmont inside of Castlevania, inside Dead by Daylight. It's going to be too great to not, to, to not play it. So obviously it was 1986 that the game came out. Uh, spawning over three decades is one of um, konami's most successful and prominent franchises of all times now the game was like those side scrolling type of games that was more linear out there so obviously you couldn't be doing you know a lot of open world and everything like that but it takes the role of the character simon belmont navigating through six levels of dracula's castle each level is divided into six blocks of three stages each um he can navigate the castle's terrain by jumping across platforms and walking up staircases and able to pro progress to new stages now the only thing i hated about it was when you fall into the water it literally just killed you and you're like really really <laughs> so a lot of great weapons in the game as well as you start getting them while you're playing it obviously my favorite was the holy cross that you would throw it and it'll come right back kind of like a boomerang and everything like that and the funny thing was what i see a lot of streamers when they do it they do the um the whip so it could be like a fireplace so when you have the the chain you'll keep on you'll throw fire on the floor and you'll keep on whipping it and then when the screen stops if you have the chain going across it's like making like a barbecue pit like you're barbecuing but, you know, the game was featured into a lot of universal pictures. And, of course, you know, Count Dracula is the main person. We're going to get to Simon's Quest as well because I want to rank all three of these together. Um, Now, Simon's Quest came out in 1987. It's an action role-playing game <clears throat> as well. Um, The player once assumes the role of the vampire harm of Simon Belmont, who is on a journey to undo a curse placed on him by Dracula at the end of the previous encounter. Dracula's body was split into five parts, which Simon must find and bring to the ruins of Castle Dracula in order to defeat him. The game deviates from the traditional platforming of its predecessor, incorporating role-playing and open-world elements. So the way it walked was that you would 
um have a world map where you're able to free and explore and kind of revisit um different areas as well kind of like when you play super ghouls and ghosts and then you play demon's crest like you were able to go around different areas um simon is controlled by the player that can talk to villagers who offer him clues or lies he can go to merchants to sell items either for fighting enemies or for traversing to other unreachable areas so i gave you a lot more out there for a game like this so it was cool a little different for me because i was more into what the first one was doing so not bad i actually enjoyed it but we'll get into now dracula's curse which came out in 1989 of course obviously by developed by konami as well um dracula's curse is the third installment of the castlevania video game series it is a prequel to the original castlevania set a few centuries before the events of the original games the game's protagonist is trevor belmont an ancestor of the original hero, Simon Belmont. So you're not even playing as the original character. This is a prelude of the actual game. So it abandons the action role-playing elements of an immediate producer, Castlevania to Simon's Quest, and returns back to the platform roots of the first Castlevania title. So we go back to how it was in the original game to go into what this one is. Now, if I had to rank all three of these, honestly, I would have to. They're all great. But I have to put only one on S tier. And honestly, for S tier, it has to be 100% Castlevania 1. I would put Dracula's Curse as an A tier and Simon Belmont, um, Simon's Quest as an A tier as well. I kind of like Dracula's Curse a little bit better. I almost dropped Simon's Quest to a B tier due to the fact that I don't like the, the whole entire role-playing aspect of it. I think when you have a game and it's good, why would you change anything of it? But we'll give it an A tier and leave it there because I think that's that's fine. That's good. We now are jumping into Contra. Now Contra is a run and fun game. We just recently played the um reboot of it recently on stream, which we did beat it. If you guys have not checked out that video, there's gonna be a card that's gonna pop out on the bottom where you guys can check that video out. It was a lot of fun. I like the game. I am a huge Contra fan. I remember playing it back in the day, and boy, man, that was one of those type of games that was super, super hard. Now a fun fact about Contra, did you know that Contra was kind of almost going off of Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, Predator character and Sylvester Stallone's Rambo character, and that's kind of how they got the whole entire thing out there. Contra employs a variety of player aspects, which includes a standard side view, 3D view, in which the player proceeds by shooting and moving um, towards the background, in addition to left or right, and fixed screen format. What I liked about the game was that you had different weapons that would pop out. My favorite gun in the whole entire game was the spreader, 100%. I think that game, that gun is the best one out there. No matter what, you had a spreader, you were good. Trust me. Now, it's set in the distant future of 2633 AD, where the evil red um, Falcon organization have set a base on a fictional Galaga near New Zealand. When a plot to wipe out humanity, two commanders, Bill and Lance of the Earth Marine Corps Contra unit, are sent to the island to destroy the enemy forces and cover the true nature of alien entity controlling them. Now, of course, the game got major, major, major love from everyone out there. So I think it was one of those type of games that everybody loved. And I think as an nes owner if you didn't have contra what were you doing you were missing out on it so contra for me 100 percent an s tier i will talk a little bit about contra force which is the other game that came out in 1992 it is a spin-off to the contra series i never played this game so i will literally be putting it in never played i am sorry i know i am a bad person I never played the game. It is a spin-off of the Contra series. Now, being the third game of the series release for the NES and the following the original of Contra and Super Contra for the uh, Super NES, the game's plot and setting are unrelated to both previous and succeeding entities, um, as the villains of the game are human terrorists instead of alien menace. The scheme was supposed to be going out to Japan uh, when no title saw the Contra series, but was canceled. I think that that might have taken it away from it because obviously we all grew up with Contra being contra you know it has to be aliens so i kind of might have not liked this game if i would have played it so for my opinion yeah i mean we'll just put it never played but if i would have played it probably it probably finds an f tier for me so we now jump into some basketball with double dribble and i'm gonna tell you right now the goat of basketball hands down is michael jordan do not fight me Forget LeBron James, but none of them are on the cover of this game and none of them are on, the, on this game at, at all. It's an arcade video game developed by Konami in 1986. It was the second basketball arcade game by Konami following Super Basketball, 
Um, it was considered the most realistic basketball sports game upon release with fast paced action, detailed players, and large scrolling court. Um, innovative cinematic um, slam dunks and detailed sound effects. Now, for the NES version, the several positions of the court were hot spots, high percentage areas where shots were take, taken, were likely to score points. Um, example, the fadeaway, the banked three pointer. So I played a little bit recently just to see how it was because I remember this game. It was one of those games that was pretty good i don't know like honestly like i was a huge fan of what game was it um the football one tecmo bowl i was a huge fan of that one but this one i, I don't know like i wasn't a fan of basketball i think i was more into baseball when i was a kid it was baseball um football of course because marino was my, my quarterback when i was like a child and then um, my grandfather used to watch Atlanta Braves baseball all the time on, on TBS and TNT. And I think it was more those sports. And I think I really loved basketball when Michael Jordan came in. And we had that um, Michael Jordan versus Larry Bird's basketball games. So that, I think that's when my, my time came to watch it. So I would ask to God... And I know I'm, people are going to hate me for this. I think Double Dribble for me is actually an F tier. I, don't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it like it should. I don't think it was a great game back in the day. So I wasn't a fan of it. I think Barry Lamere's um, basketball was a lot of people hated. I liked it because it was pretty cool. It had a, a bunch of weird shit in it. Yeah, I, I double dribble F tier. That's our first F tier of the day. So we'll have a lot more F tiers, looks like, because some of these games might be falling down there as well. So we'll see what happens. Jack Nicholson, greatest 18 holes of major championship, championship golf. Um, If you guys remember The Simpsons, they actually made fun of this game. Bart was trying to steal like a Mortal Kombat style game, and he ended up getting like a putt putt game or something like that. And he turned it off like in two seconds. Welcome to Lee Carvello's putting challenge. Ball is in. Parking lot. Would you like to play again? You have selected no. It was released in 90, 1990, 1991. It was the first game of golf ever released with a golfer named Jack Nichol Nicholas. Now it featured his favorite 18 golf holes all put together in a single course, which includes, you know, Augusta, um, Pebble Beach, um, Royal Lytham, and a bunch of others as well. He, the game features two game modes, stroke play and skins. Wow, that sounds so bad. Now, I want to say something right now. The game actually was received by a lot of people as a positive game. I like golf back in the day. I wouldn't say as much. I think it's probably the the weird the the most like realistic maybe out there, but it was criticized for slow reanimation. So I don't. You look at these games now, and you play them now, and you're like, it's not good. I'm not good enough here as well. I I don't like it. It wasn't a good game back in the day. I mean, for me, I think that there was other games out there that I enjoyed more. And if it's a Konami list, and we have to give Konami, you know, not the benefit of a doubt of every single game being a top tier, I think Jack Nicholson falls into an F tier. So we're going to F tier right now. Jackal, also distributed under the title of Top Gunner, is an overhead running gun video game released by Konami in 1986. I was four years old. The player must maneuver an armed jeep in order to rescue prisoners of war trapped in enemy territory. If you guys don't know the whole entire thing back then, the Cold War was huge back then. I think that's when, like, World War II, Cold War, all this crazy shit was going on back there. You had an elite group of four soldiers that have undergone harsh training, which means to survive in any environment. The team is composed of Colonel Decker, Lieutenant Bob, Sergeant Quint, and Corporal Gray. Yeah, those are all people that I would think that are in these type of war games. Um, they can be played with two players simultaneously. The second player can join in during play anytime. And the two Jeeps are numbered on their hoods to indicate which players in control. I, I don't know. Like, bro, you had G.I. Joe, you had Metal Gear, you had all these games back in the day. I think Jackal was one of those type, type of games I was trying to go away from, you know, the Bayou. Well, getting a little bit of aspect from Bayou Billy and doing that. But getting away from, you know, Russian Attack and all these other games and being more into like a like a Jeep style game um, and getting away from Contra, which is cool, I guess. But honestly, I got to put this as a, uh, a B tier for me. I don't think it's an F tier, but it is a B tier for me compared to other games out there. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't a fan fan of it. So we'll, we'll put it as B tier. I think it's worse than Rush Attack. Um, I think Rush Attack is a little bit better, but I think we had other games that were better than that one. So, Laser Invasion. Um, the player takes control of a military operative who pilots an attack helicopter in order to infiltrate various enemies' bases and fulfill his mission. 
The game supports the standard NES controller as well as the NES Zapper light gun and the laser scope. A voice activated headset controller Konami release for the NES that was compatible with all light gun game releases for the system. You have a mission brief, you know, of what happened, what what, what you're gonna get, what type of you know enemy area you're gonna go. But you had another game which we did release as the one of the top five games on the NES um, based off of movies, which is Top Gun, which we're gonna be getting to that later on. Is laser invasion worse than all those games? I would have to say yes. Was Laser Invasion an F tier? I would have to say yes. If we were to go based on all the games that we're going off of today, we literally have Laser Invasion, we have Life Force, we have Gradius, we have two Top Gun games. So if I had to put this into perspective, Laser Invasion will be an F tier if I have to rank all four games. Which now gets into our next game right now, which is Salamander, which is retitled Life Force. The game was come out in 1986 as a spinoff of Gradius. Salamander introduced a simplified power-up system, two-player cooperative gameplay, and both horizontal and vertical scrolling images. Some of these later became normal for future Gradius um, games now the first pair controls vike viper and the second pair controls the reigns of the beauty and spacecraft lord british the game features six stages which are altered between horizontal and vertical scrolling now many of the power-ups in this game was pretty cool because you can combine them there was an arcade version of the game that released under the original title in japan and europe and honestly i think the game is good it, it literally came out on the PlayStation and sake of saturn on um, Thalos Salamander Deluxe Pack Plus. And I would have to rank this because we do have, you know, two of the games that are going to be coming out. I would rank this possibly as a A tier for me. Let me know if you guys have played this game. If you guys have played any of these fighter fighter games, let me know what you guys are ranking them. Because I think Life Force is actually a pretty cool game if you haven't played it. If you like Gradius and all that. All right, next on the list will be konami's very own monster in my pocket which was best known for the toy line released by matchbox in 1990 now the video game was released in 1992 by of course konami it had the same essential concept of the comic book although it altered the personalities of hobgoblin and gremlin and they see the good monsters but now appeared to be as villains to the extent that gremlin was a boss um don't know why but obviously things they want to change out there Warlock wanting to have power over rule of all monsters creates a shrinking spell to use a punishment for any of those who choose to oppose them. As time goes on, all the monsters choose to join his side, except for Vampire and the monster. Now, the remaining monsters of the whole entire comics, Werewolf, um, Vampires, Golem, Swamp Beast, the Phantom of the Opera, and others um, made no appearance whatsoever in the game, which is kind of weird because I'm not sure how the writers were back there. If you had to pay a lot of money for all this stuff, maybe it could have been that's the reason why many of them were on there. But to miss half of those type of monsters, because I'm a huge, you know, retro, like very, very, very deep black and white uh, monster movie match person. So not seeing the werewolf, not seeing Swamp Beast, not seeing Dr. Jekyll or the mummy at all is a huge huge loss for me so i don't know obviously the, the, there was good things with it i think mostly because of the toy line but there was an animated special and i need two um which is monster in my pocket the big scream uh produced by hannah barbera which if it's produced by hannah barbera that means that it could come out of multiverses i don't know we're just now we're just talking about other things out there but i kind of wonder what it would be i would have liked to see maybe like another movie on it um i know they were trying to plan on doing a movie with it but it didn't really come out to to happen but if i were to rate the game i know it's well received i don't know how much i would how much i liked it i'm gonna give it a b tier on this one as well um great game but not on the top level to these two i think i think s tier has been very very hard we've done a lot of tier lists before that s tier has been probably a lot of them on there but so far only three games are on there can any of these other games at the end come out to it? Who knows? Next one we're going to go right now is The Goonies 2. And The Goonies are one of those type of movies that I love so damn much. I mean, The Goonies portrayal, the movie, half of those actors are still major actors now. So obviously seeing, you know, the the video game coming out. So it was an open level design similar to Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns, and Castlevania 2. Now the game featured two modes of play platform and first person most of the game is played as a former um as the player works through a non-linear map the player moves mikey to new areas of the map by ladders or doors that may act as warp zones now so you can think of friday the 13th with the whole entire part of the first person area where you're kind of going to a wall turning around and things like that so it's kind of 
that same type of limiter. There were a number of weapons that player can use. The player can equip both a primary and secondary weapon. Um, I can use three primary weapons, the yo-yo, a short range weapon with limited power, the sling slot, the slingshot, slingshot, a um, range ammunition based weapon, and the boomerang as well. I think boomerangs is pretty much like the main weapon in almost every single game back in the day in the retro area. Mikey loses one life whenever his health meter is completely drained or he falls to the bottom edge of the screen. When all lives are lost, the game is over and the player receives a passcode that can be used to resume play at a later time. I am actually going to be listing the Goonies 2 on an A tier for me. Um, very good game. I loved it a lot. I would actually play it again right now, honest to God. I, I'm actually enjoying playing all these games back in the day. I mean, we're playing a lot of bad ones, but I would really love to start playing these good games that we have on here. And Carmen San Diego is going to be one of them. We're going to play one day, so trust me. We're gonna have a long stream. It's gonna be full retro, and we're just gonna be playing all these games. Next game on the list is Gradius. Yes, we did speak about Life Force, which is part of Gradius. Um, but we have Gradius right now, which is the side-scrolling shooter video game developed by Konami in 1985. Now, the cool thing about Konami is that everything that Konami makes is an arcade game, and then gets ported over to Nintendo. Now, the creative version of Gradius was initially released internationally outside Japan under the title of Nemesis. Now, Gradius was critically acclaimed for its gameplay and unique power sub system, along with Namco's Exvadius. It is cited as being one of the most important shooter games, having paved the way for many similar to follow. I wonder if this is the reason why they paved the way for a game like Silver Surfer, which was a side scrolling shooter game, which honestly got pissed me the hell off because it was probably the hardest game in the world to ever play. If you have not seen that video, I will put a tag right here where you'll see a card coming out. You guys can check out that video as well. Now the player controls a trans-dimensional spaceship Vike Viper, kind of similar to Life Force with the Viper thing, and must battle waves of enemies through various environments. The game become synonymous with the phrase, destroy the core, as a standard of boss battles in the Gradius series involve combat with a giant craft. Now, this is one of the games that honestly was given a 90, 89, a high score out there. And honestly, with Life Force being on an A tier, Gradius was one of those type of games that if you like those side-scrolling shooting games, which I did back in the day, I would honest to God put this one as a, oh, as a S tier. Um, for me on um, one of those games that you must play if you have not played it yet so check it out track and field the cool thing about it is that the box actually says this is a real sport yes track and field was a huge sport back in the day knows that hyper olympic in japan and europe it was released in 1983 Players compete in a series of events, most involving alternately pressing two buttons as quickly as possible. Make the on-screen character run faster. It has a horizontal side scrolling format, depicting one of two tracks at a time, a large scoreboard that displays world records and current runs, and a packed audience in the background. The game was worldwide commercial success in the arcades, becoming one of the most successful arcade games in 1984. The game had the 100 meter dash, the long jump, the javelin throw, the 110 meter hurdles, the hammer throw, and the high jump. I used to love playing the long jump and the high jump. Those are my two favorite ones. And I used to run track and field. So when I was in track and field, I used to do the discus, which is the um, flying like frisbee looking thing that weighed about like 10 pounds, like eight to 10 pounds. And you have to like spin around, just throw it like a maniac. I also used to do the 200 meter dash and the 400 meter dash. I would I used to be put into like the longer ones, like the four by four hundreds or like the 1600, which is like a mile, but I was terrible at those. So I used to just do the single one. Cause if we were behind like the four by 400, I would kind of sprint cause I was always the third one. And I kind of like gassed myself out too early, but I love doing those. I did the long jump a couple of times. I wasn't the best at the long jump in, in track and field when I was in high school, but I enjoyed playing this as a, a a kid back in the day it's one of those things that you know track and field was huge like you used to watch the olympics because you had the team usa which in basketball was one of the top teams out there you had track runners that you were watching all the time trying to see who they be if they beat the world records and all that so track and field was huge the olympics i think was way bigger back in the day than it is now i think the olympics now has kind of died out and I remember in 96, I think that's when the Olympics came to Atlanta. That was huge. And I used to watch all the Olympics, winter and um, summer. So track and field, 100% is going to an S tier for me. 110% S tier. We now get Stinger. 
1986 video game with the shoot em up video game developed by Konami as well. Honestly, it can be played by three players simultaneously. The first two players control Twin B and Win B, and the third player controls Gwyn B, a green ship. I played this game recently, and holy effing snickerdoodle, it was bad. I am putting this 100% in F tier, like super F tier. It is the worst game in the world. If you're trying to go into a game like Gradius or a game like Life Force, or any other game pretty much out there, this is probably the worst game I have ever seen on the Nintendo system. We are now getting to the nitty gritty to the ending of this whole entire tier list right now. And I think it's shaping up to be very good. Two more S tiers I got it out there. What other game can make it up there? We have about, we have about nine more games to go. So let's see what we have right now with Super C, which is Super Contra right now. The home version of Super Contra was released by Nintendo in February of 1990. The gameplay and graphics of Super C are similar to the port of the first Contra game. There are three stages unique to the NES version, a high-tech base, a mountain, and an alien nest as well. All vertical scrolling stages. And the order of the latter stages and bosses are also slightly different with new bosses featured in the version, including a new final boss. Now, the Konami code was not included in this Contra game. A different code was added, which gives you out 30 lives in the Famicom version and 10 lives in the NES versions. I honestly, God, out of all the Contra games, I think Contra is the best one right now. This one did get a very good um, positive reviews. But for me, you cannot put every Contra game in the top S tier. And to this one, I felt like it kind of gave away from what the original was and it might have just been that i love the original so much and i wouldn't have to put this one as a b tier for me i don't think it was as good as what the original was or any of the future games came out for contra and now we get into the lone ranger yes we're not talking about the movie with um johnny depp and the other guy that was a terrible damn movie but this game was just as bad as it was as also the 1991 action adventure game released by konami for nintendo released only in north america is based on the lone ranger radio and tv franchise the latter which is still rerunning in syndication when the game was released the game follows the basic premise of the lone ranger mythos the player takes control of the lone ranger a former texas ranger who commands were murdered by an outlaw named butch caverton while the game's instruction manual deviates from the original radio serials and tv series by claiming that dan reed was john reed's father the game itself remains true to the source material by identifying one of the murder rangers as the Lone Ranger's brother. Now there's a total of eight areas in the game where the player must accomplish a different objective on each one before moving on to the next. I played it, I'm not a fan of it. I mean, there's a lot of games that have come out and I think that, like I said, a lot of games have come out that we've talked about that have made into movies and have TV series and they wanted to make a video game of it because it was easy. You have no source material. You're literally grabbing the source and just putting it out there in a video game. And this one to me actually falls down into an F tier. I think it's probably a bad game and it wasn't well received compared to games like the Goonies or um, other Batman Returns or even the original Batman game. This one falls flat on his face. So sorry, Lone Ranger, you're going to be not alone in the F tier because you got a couple of games on there, but yeah, you're going to fall down there. They're tiny, they're toony, they're a little bit loony because we got three games for the Tiny Toon Adventures. And we're going to start off with Tiny Toon Adventures 2, Trouble and a Wacky Land. It's a Tiny Toons based video game released on Nintendo in 1993. The game was originally released in Japan, but then obviously came over here. There are five areas which the player can explore, each one starring a different character. Plucky rides a bumper car, Hampton rides a train, Babs rides a roller coaster, Furball dodges Sweetie and a log ride, and Buster explores a fun house similar to the game's predecessor. Rodiac, Rat, and the villainous characters from the television show try to interfere with the Tiny Toons. Additional characters from the game make a, um, cameo appearances throughout the game. Now, each ride costs a certain amount of tickets, but the player racks up points on various rides. More tickets are earned eventually. When enough tickets have been earned, they can be saved until the player has enough to afford entrance fee to the fun house. Between the three games, honestly, I don't think any of them will make an S tier. And honestly, I think that Tiny Toons 2 um, Trouble in Wacky Land is actually going to be my B tier game here. Oh, not replayed. It's going to be my B tier game out of all of them. So 
we're gonna put that one on there i think it's not an a tier for me um between the three so i will put it as a as a b tier there we now go into cartoon workshop now we've seen a lot of games out there and i i would like to mention one guy which i'm going to put his switch on here if you love retro stuff like i do and we've been doing a lot of retro stuff on here you gotta go check out johnny boombots over on twitch i will be giving him a shout out because he is a retro person and i'll actually start collecting a lot more retro stuff once i move check him out giving you a shout out buddy um because he actually has the mario paint original in a box so if you ever catch him on stream Mention it to him. Say, hey, troll, send me over here. Tell me to tell you, um, tell you to show me the the Mario Paint. But Cartoon Workshop is pretty much almost like that without the actual pad. The game allows the player to make a cartoon by writing a scenario, selecting music and sound, designing the set, and directing the action taken by the in-game characters. Up to two characters can be featured on the screen at once with Buster, Babs, Plucky, Furball, Clamati, and Litter Beeper available for selection. Saving the cartoon is not possible, however, unless one uses a VCR or another screen capture method. We had no other screen capture method. The only thing I had was a VCR or a huge handheld camera to record. That must have been the worst thing out there. Cartoons created on this video can only last up to five minutes as opposed to the typical 28 minutes of the episode of Time to Adventures. No crap, Sherlock. We're not going to be doing a video of 30 minutes because I don't think we're an actual writer like that. But to only have five minutes and you ha it's no way of saving it. I understand it's an NES, but there's so many games out there that has so much stuff that you can save. I honestly, God, am putting this into an F tier. I think it was a good concept just poorly done we now go into tiny tune adventures the game was released in 1991 the player um initially controls buster bunny in effort to rescue babs bunny from her kidnapper montana max or everyone knows monty um before each role the player can select an alternate character that can switch into if they find a star ball the three alternate characters are Dizzy Devil, Furball, and Plucky Duck. Dizzy, Furball, and Plucky have unique abilities that bugs her locks. Plucky can briefly fly and swim better than others. Dizzy can destroy walls and most enemies with a spin move. And Furball can climb most vertical surfaces, slowing down them rather than plunging down. However, Buster can jump higher than others. Um, there's six worlds in this game with three levels each. The hills, the wetlands, the trees, the downtown wacky land, and Mont Monty's Mansion. Now, of course, we can't go wrong without having Hampton um, aiding Buster who will give Buster an extra life for every 30 carats each. Duck Vader, a parody of Darth Vader, makes a cameo appearance as a secret boss if the number of carats collected in any level is odd multiple of 11. If a player can defeat him without losing one life and the bosses, three extra lives will be granted. The fact that they had Star Wars in this is huge. I love it, all right? I love this game. And before we even give our ranking on this, I have one more question to ask you all right now. If you love Tiny Toon Adventures, I would love for you to comment below who was your favorite Tiny Toon Adventure character and why. For me, it's Plucky Duck. I'm sorry. I love Plucky Duck. I love Daffy Duck. And I love freaking Donald Duck. I think I have a thing for ducks. That's weird. But Plucky Duck was my favorite one of them all. Dizzy Devil was good, but Plucky was my man. So I would love to know what you guys think. Make sure to comment below who your favorite character was from Tiny Toon Adventures. But this game was great. The fact that they had Star Wars on it, would I give it an S tier? No, but would I put it into a high A tier? Yes, I would. Highway to the danger zone. I've been called the songbird of my generation. As we get into Top Gun, the 1987 video game by Konami on the Nintendo si um, system. It is a shoot 'em up simulation flying game. I was a huge person on top gun i love top gun i loved any war movie out there especially when they were flying the, sh the air aircrafts i wanted to be in the air force so damn bad all right now you are viewed in the first perspective inside a cockpit of the f-14 fighter the game is based on a 1986 hit film top gun and played across four levels each one involving a player fighting against enemy migs the player has a limited machine gun ammunition and three different types of missile each one with their own advantages Mags also have their own missiles, which the player must avoid or destroy. The player is presented with their on-screen information, such as altitude, airspeed, and radar and fuel gauge. Once, once during each level, the player can call in a tanker plane to refuel the F-4 if necessary. Refueling is done in mid-air, and a player must align the F-14 with the fuel pump. After each level, the must 
the the player must successfully land the f-14 on a u.s aircraft carrier let me tell you right now that aircraft carrier it was the hardest damn thing to freaking land on but holy crap this game was great the music was great the game style was great it was a commercial hit i loved it and it was from what i'm reading it is one of the top selling games in the united states for two weeks in january 1988 it surpassed 1.8 million units by 1989 which is huge i honestly god think that this was by the best game and we've put a ranking on there on best games um based on movies and top gun was part of it that is going to put top gun 100 on my s tier the next game we got is top gun it's the second mission because they have no other names because in japan they call the top gun dual fighters the game was released in december of 1990 they assume the role of maverick on f-14 tomcat and he is summoned for a new operation divided into three missions the enemy is not explicitly identified, but boss characters are highly advanced Soviet Union prototypes from the time. Enemy aces have stereotypical Russian style names as Gorky, Dmitri, and Stalin. Why is Dmitri always used in everything out there? But let's get back into it. Um, compared to the previous Top Gun game, this game feature, um, features greatly improved graphics, in game music, which appears in both systems and an easier carrier language se landing sequence a one or two player voices mode can as well as this dogfight this game was well received but honestly for me i kind of feel like it's not as good as the original one and i guess it's because just my preference i like the first one a lot better i think the first one was was you know more interesting i think they added too many bells and whistles to this one which kind of took away from the whole entire aspect of what we loved about the first one so top gun second um second mission we're gonna give you a b tier on that one buddy track and field two now we've had a series of when movies should have stopped they should have stopped with track and field one because it is a sequel it completes with olympic style events but adds more realism by choosing a country for the player to represent the series boosting 15 sporting events with two of them available as bonus stages between rounds on Olympic mode. So you had fencing, triple jump, freestyle swimming, high dive, clay pigeon shooting, hammer throw, taekwondo, pole vault, canoeing, archery, hurdles, hurdles on the bar, hand gliding, <sighs> arm wrestling, and gun firing. Holy crap. And you had all these cards you could pick and all that stuff. I honestly feel like they did too much. I The graphics are like, I enjoyed the original graphics. This one felt like it was just like, not nintendo style and if that makes sense like nintendo has their own style and i think this one kind of deviated from that style so honestly another b tier out there for me so i don't i don't like it and last but not we least we have zen the intergalactic ninja because there's ninjas in intergalactic intergalactic space could you imagine when aliens come down here if we have zen the intergalactic ninja come out he will whoop all of our butts i'm telling you right now all right it is a fictional character created in, in 1987 by Steve Stern and Dan Cote, an industry published under the Zen Comics imprint. In early 90s, Zen was licensed to Archie Comics and then to Entity Comics. If you know Archie Comics, Archie Comics are amazing. You gotta, you gotta watch that stuff because it is a great, great, a great series. So the plot of the game was that Zen fights an alien villain known as Lord Konominus, who is keen on harming the Earth's ecological environment the game did score some good scores out there it was a very well-known game that a lot of people liked it kind of reminded me a lot more of how do you call it ninja gaiden um for the nes with the with the style of the fighting and all that there was a little bit of stages that you had that you were more like ninja gaiden than you had ones that were controlling like a real car they were doing different missions i would put this up there because it is a great game if you have not played it it's one of those like rare hard to find games like kind of like marvel vs capcom 2 where if you had the chance to play it, you will enjoy it. I'm going to put this as an A tier for me because I think it is one of those type of games that would be on the top. And I always do this. I always at least do my S tiers. Bucky O'Hare is 100% the number one game. Castlevania, 100% the number two game. Contra, 100% the number three game. I would put Track and Field 4, Top Gun 5, Gradius 6. All right. When we go to A tier, I would probably put... The Goonies 2, I'll put a tiny sort of edges, Goonies 2. I will probably put Dracula's Curse, third. Simon's Quest in fifth. We're in San Diego, number four. Bayou Billy there, and then we'll continue like that. That's 
I think Zen should be a little bit higher there. There we go. That's perfect. I think this tier list right now is 100% what we, de we needed. I actually like it. I think it's great. We didn't play one game out of this whole entire list, which is amazing. Um, and I want to know, do you guys think that this tier list is good? Do you, what would you change out of it? You know, because obviously there's always those games that people will be like, how are you going to put um, Monster in My Pocket as a B tier? That's 100% an A tier. Or how would you put Top Gun as an S tier? That should be a B tier. Anything you guys want to know, let me know because I always want, I always love these type of things with you guys. And if you guys would love for me to do this on a live stream, let me know as well. We are working on doing a 12 hour stream. Not sure when, but we will be doing a tier list on it as well when we do that stream. It's going to be a full retro stream as well. But I like it. I think it's good. If you guys want to check out the other tier list, there is going to be a video popping out very soon of other tier lists that we've done. Check that one out as well. But thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this one.